Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, I've got another video for you here. I have a piece of gear that I think you might find interesting. If you've watched videos on this channel before, you may have heard me refer to lights and lasers on carry guns in a less than enthusiastic tone. And that's really just about me liking to keep my gun as small as possible, and I've always felt like lights added too much bulk. Well, the folks over at Warriorland have come out with the SL-1 mini gun light. We're talking about a device that has four different modes of operation. It has respectable battery life and it's water resistant, among other things. Are these traits going to be enough to change my mind that lights on carry guns are a good idea? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks again for being with us today. So if this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've watched our videos before and you just haven't had a chance to do so before now, and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button right there in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and you can subscribe that way. It's a simple thing that helps us out a whole lot, and we really appreciate it. So we're looking at the... SL-1 Mini Gun Light by Warriorland. So just a few things here before I even get into this. I want to show you just how nice the packaging is on this. And I don't even normally care about stuff like this. But this is really, they've taken the time. Everything has a place. It's very well protected. So when you receive it and you open the package up, it looks, you know, like something a $1,500 iPhone would come in. So, you know, hats off for some very well protected, not just good looking, but protective packaging. I don't normally care about those kinds of things, but I was pretty impressed, so I thought I would start there. Let's do a quick safety check. Um, once you see that the gun we're using for this demonstration is unloaded, there's nothing in the magazine. We are using a Glock 43 for the purposes of this uh, review. This particular light, uh, is compatible with the Glock 42, 43, 43X, and the Glock 48. So, the first thing you'll notice, obviously, is there are four screws on the left-hand side. Obviously, if you take those four screws out, you can see there is a seam, and this simply comes apart for you to mount it on the trigger guard. Of course, there's a little recess, you know, where this fits over the trigger guard, and you simply press the two halves together, and you put your screws in. Um, this literally took less than five minutes to put on the gun. That includes taking out of the package and admiring the packaging. So if that gives you any idea how easy this is, then it's definitely easy. So you notice there's a button here and there's also a button here. Either one of these buttons will control the light. And actually for one of the control modes, you need both buttons. And I'll get into that in a minute. But there's a little, you can probably see there's a lighter segment here at the very top. That is actually an LED light. That LED light will change colors momentarily when you press the button to let you know what your battery life is. If it's green, you have over 70%. If it's orange, it's between 30 and 70. And if it's red, you have less than 30%. So you have real-time battery information right there on the switch. So speaking of batteries, you may have noticed there's a little screw access here on the bottom. This addresses one of my chief complaints with lights on guns in the first place, and that is not having to take the light off the gun to change the batteries. You take that off, and it uses two of these CR um, 1-3N batteries, which you can find in all kinds of places. And then you put your little cover back on and just take a coin here and screw it right back down as soon as I get it going here. It's pretty easy once you get it lined up. It just takes a couple of turns here and it's pretty good to go. So that is in place. All right, so now that we have the light mounted, we know it's got batteries in it, um, we're going to go over the modes of operation. So... Like I said, you can use either button. The first mode of operation is what they call tactical light mode. So if I take either finger and I push and I hold, you can see the light comes on and it stays on as long as my finger is on the button. And either button will do, as I said. That is tactical light mode. If you want the light to stay on, you simply tap momentarily and release. 
lights on. You see how the green LED came up momentarily there? Okay, now both the tactical and the always on mode are the full beam strength, which is 150 lumens. When you push the button again, it will turn off whatever mode you're in. Now, if you double tap either button quickly, you enter strobe mode. Okay, that is also the full 150 lumen strength. And you can see where the strobe mode might actually be very useful in confusing a, a potential attacker, help you, you know, get away or make some other kind of decision. And then once again, we press this to turn it back off. If you reach around, you'll need to grab both buttons at the same time. So I have both buttons together. And if I pinch them simultaneously, then you see that very low beam right there? That is what they call moonlight mode, and it is the lowest ultra low mode in its three lumens. Okay, and I'm just going to sweep my finger with a light only. Okay, you already know that we are safe and unloaded, but I'm going to do that anyway just so you can see the light. We are safely just demonstrating that low mode there. So, once again, you tap it to turn that back off. So, once again, tactical, you got your strobe. Constant light mode here, and then your moonlight mode. So those are your four specific modes of operation for the SL1 minigun light. All right, so just discussing the rest of the features here. Obviously, you know, we covered the different modes. You saw that you have the battery indicator here whenever you push into any mode, which stays on momentarily. Um, we mentioned that this was water resistant. It does have an IPX4 rating. As far as your battery life, if you're on any of the highlight modes, whether it's tactical, uh, you know, constant light, or whether it is the um, strobe mode, all three of those are 150 lumens, which is the maximum strength, and you have one hour of battery life if you have that. Any of those three modes stay on continuously. Now the ultra low mode um, is only three lumens and if you use that you have 35 hours of battery life and you know one of the potential uses for that might be you know you may find yourself in a situation where you just need a light in order to get you out of a bad situation you know like a low visibility situation you need a flashlight that ultra low mode could be just enough to help you find things in the dark you know if it's an emergency situation it would allow you to see things you know just differentiate between things around you just to stay safe but the beam is effective it's supposed to have a range of 100 meters in the on high and then it has a five meter range on the ultra low mode and uh, we're going to demonstrate all of that in just a little bit but it seems to have a pretty good set of features it looks like that uh, you know that battery life is pretty decent even on the high mode so we've talked about the light itself. Let's talk about this holster for a second. So they give you this custom molded Kydex holster to go with the gun. Now, when I first saw this holster, um, I was, you know, I wasn't very thrilled because for me, and this is just me, every time I've tried to wear a, a holster like this, um, it always ends up cutting into me somehow and I'm always uncomfortable. I just, I got to have generally something that's shaped a little bit different. But I said, you know what? I like everything else about this. I like the way it looks. It's got a really solid clip on it. It looks like it was made well. So I want to go ahead and try it out. And I will tell you something. I was totally wrong about this being uncomfortable. Um, it is such a perfect fit for the gun that when it's up against the body, there wasn't a single irritating edge on this holster that bothered me at all. And I actually really like the way it sits because there's a slight, if you look, you know, the position where the clip is, you have just a slight forward cant on the gun. And I really like that whenever I have something uh, in the belt like that. I usually wear my gun somewhere in a 3 to 3.30 position. And uh, I was pretty impressed with how comfortable this was. Now, the one thing I did have to practice with, and this has nothing to do with the holster, it's more to do with the fact that it's a Kydex holster and it's something that I do all the time because I'm not thinking. You know, when this holster is against your body and you've got your belt on, well, you know, if it's pressed up against you and you remove the firearm, well, everything's fine when it's empty, but of course, if the firearm comes out, 
and then it smashes against the body well the space to get it back in can sometimes be you know resistant to drop back in well all you have to do is when you're coming back in the holster is just start on this side you know just press lightly against the outside when you're reholstering and it goes right in so even the holster when i was wearing it pretty tight on my belt with a little bit of practice i was able to reholster pretty easily and like i said this isn't the holster's fault this is just something that i run into because when i wear a kydex holster i just you know i don't think to do that half the time um, so i had absolutely no problem drawing this from the holster easily finding it and then putting it back in the holster with just a little bit of practice and you know the combination fits so perfectly and look at the profile when the weapon is in the holster i mean the only bulk you can really see is the clip and this is on the outside so it's an extremely comfortable little setup i was pretty impressed with how it felt on the body especially with the bad luck i've had with other kydex holsters so i think they did a really good job with this well, at this point, you know, we've talked about the light and its operation. We've talked about the holster. I, I don't think I can do you justice on something like this without a real um, world, you know, demonstration. So we're going to head out where we can get a low light situation. We're going to take the light and we're going to go out there and see what this thing looks like for real. So let's go do it. All right, we've relocated to a nice dark area so we can demonstrate the modes of operation. For the Warriorland SL1 minigun light. So I mentioned earlier there's four specific modes. We're going to go over each one. And uh, remember there's a button on either side. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to draw from the holster here. And I'm going to use my right index finger to press and hold the right side button. As you can see, this is tactical mode. The light is on, but if I release, it immediately goes back out. Finger back on, light's back on. So as long as I'm holding my finger on the button, I got light when I release, it goes away. So as you can see, there's a lot of light. This is the full intensity, which is 150 lumens, which is what you get on um, every mode except for the moonlight, which we'll go over in a minute. So 150 lumens, and then I release. All right, so there's a constant light mode. And if I momentarily tap the button, it stays on by itself. You can see my index finger is now free. So I have the same 150 lumen intensity. It will stay on until I tap it again to turn it off. And as you can see, you can see quite a good ways down the path there. I can easily see 75 yards ahead of me. And of course, there's lots of trees overhead. It's pretty dark right here where I'm at. So this gives you a scale of just how much light this gives you. So I'm gonna tap and turn that off. If you double tap either button quickly, it puts you in strobe mode. And as you can see, this once again is the full 150 lumens. And just looking at it against the bushes, you can see this could be very disorienting, confusing to a potential attacker. So this mode might very well have some use for you. And then once again, if I tap, that'll turn that off. Now the last mode, if you grab the buttons on either side press them simultaneously you get what they call moonlight you can see it's a much lower mode here it's only three lumens this would be good for identifying something directly in front of you i mean like right in front of you within you know 10 20 feet you can see it lights up the path pretty good anything close surrounding me and once again of course your battery savings will be incredible when you're in this low mode and this would probably be more for you getting out of a low visibility situation like being able to follow this path something like that getting out of a building if you're in some place that's really dark so it'd be good to guide you not necessarily good for long distance identifying targets but certainly a way to save battery and once again if i tap that button then we are back off so that covers your four modes of operation for the warrior land sl1 mini gun light Let's head back inside. All right, back in the light. So, as you saw in that demonstration, everything I was talking about originally um, hopefully made a whole lot more sense as far as the operation. In the dark, it's, it's pretty amazing how much light you got off of this. You know, I wasn't expecting it to be quite that good. 
I've had lights before. I've had different gun lights. I've tried a lot of stuff, but this little light was very crisp. You could see as I was looking at, you know, groups of trees and bushes and even down that uh, concrete pathway, we got really good light. Um, I felt like I could easily, you know, identify everything around me and the low mode, even in that mode, getting very close to the bushes, you know, you were able to see very good right in front of you. So every operational mode on this light, I think, you know, has some real world use. And as I said, I think that strobe, you saw how it looked against the trees and, and the leaves and everything. I think that could be very confusing um, against a potential attacker, um, possibly even enough to distract and disturb so you could, you know, disengage and get away if need be. And because ultimately, of course, we want to try to get out of these encounters without anything, you know, going sideways. So I was pretty impressed um, with its actual usage and operation, how easy it was. So let's talk about overall impressions. So, like I said, I typically have not been a person that used, you know, lights on my guns. But, you know, this package, you know, we're talking about the light and the gun. I mean, both of these items together was a $79 package. That is, I, I think, pretty good. I've seen a lot of lights like this, and just the lights were, you know, $100, $150 or more. So, you know, for Warrior Land to be able to come out with this light with a decent battery life, with multiple modes of operation that's water resistant, and you have a matching holster with it for $79. I don't know. I, I think that's a pretty good deal. I spent a lot more on stuff that I wasn't near as happy with. And um, and actually using it, I felt like that it provided me plenty of light. And it's one of the few scenarios where I've used a Kydex holster and been comfortable wearing it. So the question from the beginning was, well, is this enough to make me change my opinion about putting lights on carry guns? Well, I don't know about that, but I am going to carry this light on this carry gun. I can promise you that because this is the first time I've been able to do it. And I've really been satisfied with both the product and the level of comfort. So to the folks over at Warrior Land, I think you did a great job on this. And um, I'm glad I was able to get my hands on one. So that's going to do it for today, folks. As always, we appreciate you being with us. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So until that time, as always, everybody be safe and have a great day. Thank you very much.